Hey everyone, this is Brecht Billet from Strong Brew. Wait a minute, wrong company. It's from Simplified Courses, where we will simplify complexity for you. Today we will tackle angular change detection in a nutshell. This will only be a five minute video, so let's get started. Today we will talk about angular change detection. What is change detection? It's the system that tells Angular what to re-render and when. But how does Angular know? Well, it has Zone.js, which is a library that will monkey patch all asynchronous browser APIs. So Angular can hook into it and notify the change detection system. So every time an event happens, Zone.js will trigger change detection. There are two zones and there can only be one zone active at the same time. We have the outer zone, which will be forked into the inner zone. The outer zone is also called the parent zone, and it will never trigger change detection. If you want to use the outer zone, there is this method on ng-zone, which is called run outside Angular. All the code written inside of that function will be executed in the outer zone. The inner zone is also called the Angular zone and it will always trigger change detection whenever an event happens that is subscribed to. It will run by default, but if we're running in the outer zone, you can leverage the run method from ng-zone to go back into the inner zone. In the outer zone, we can run set timeout, set interval, or listen to any event that is happening in the browser. This will never result in change detection. In the inner zone, when we do a set timeout, set interval, or listen to some kind of event by using the add event listener method, then change detection will always trigger. In this example, we can see that we have a set interval that locks only do nothing. We're gonna trigger this function every two seconds and see what happens. We can see that we get some kind of flashlight here because I've created functionality to highlight my components when they're being detected for changes. When zone.js captures an event, it will trigger change detection through the tick method. And the tick method will take all the views in our application from top to bottom and trigger change detection on them. In Angular, there are two strategies. We have the default strategy and the onPush strategy. Let's start with the default strategy. As we can see here, all our views are in default strategy mode. So when we start with change detection, the refresh view method will be called on the top view. Then it will be called on the child views and so on. When we're using the change detection strategy on push, it becomes a bit more complex because with on push change detection never runs unless the view is dirty. Here we can see that all the views are using the on push strategy. So when we're triggering change detection, nothing will happen. In this scenario, only the top view is being marked as dirty. So when we're triggering change detection, it will run the refresh view method on that view, but it will stop for the rest of the views. Here there are multiple views that are being marked as dirty. So when change detection runs, it will run from top to bottom. First it will run refresh view on the top view and then it will go to the children that are marked as dirty and also call refresh view on them. Then again it will stop because their children are not marked as dirty. If we're running change detection here, we will start by running refresh view on the top view. Then we will go to their children, their children, and we can see that it goes from top to bottom. We do have to make sure that if we mark a view as dirty, that its parents are marked as dirty as well. Otherwise, the chain will break. Here we can see that we call refresh view on the top view, and then it got broken because the third view is not being marked as dirty. When is a view marked as dirty? We can do that through event binding, using the async pipe, calling mark for check directly on the change detector ref. In a change detection cycle, we can also set an input and we can do that by using immutable data. Event binding is simply connecting a method from a component to an actual output. When that happens behind the scenes, it will mark this view as dirty, their parents and so on. When change detection runs, it will call refresh view on the top view, on the child view and on the actual view where the event was being bound. If we're using an async pipe on a component, behind the scenes, every time an event happens in there, it will mark the view as dirty and all its parents. So again, change detection will trigger causing a refresh view to be called on all the components 
until it's done. The same is true if you're running the mark for check method from the change detector ref. It will mark this view as dirty and the parents and then later on when change detection is being triggered it will traverse the tree just like we saw before. Have you ever wondered why immutable data is so important when using the unpush strategy? First of all, it will call refresh view on all the dirty components and then when the input is being set with a new reference, this view is marked as dirty as well. So then the refresh view is being called and our cycle is complete. If you want to test your knowledge, definitely check out this change detection quiz. And if you want to cheat, you can use my change detection cheat sheet. Do you want to know everything about Angular change detection? I reverse engineered the code and wrote a book about it. So if you're interested, you can grab it here. There will be a 20% discount in the YouTube video. That was just over five minutes, but I'm glad. Thank you very much.